everybody this is chef kaizad and i am back today with a brand new series of some yummy asian food now i know our first complaint with asian food is that we don't cook it often enough at home but we always love to eat it at restaurants the reason why a lot of us don't cook it at home is because we think it's either too difficult or we don't have the ingredients available today i'm going to show you an authentic thai green curry recipe with pretty much all the ingredients available at your local supermarket now i am almost never happy with the brands or packets of curry paste that we get in our local supermarkets they are either too expensive or they don't have the right flavor or the right color so today i'm going to share a recipe that i learned from an actual thai grandmama whom i worked with in one of the restaurants it's a very very easy recipe we are going to make the curry paste fresh at home from scratch for that we will take some cumin seeds some coriander seeds and we is going to very lightly roast them cumin and coriander are two flavors that we will find in pretty much any cuisine in the world as an indian i would like to call them my own flavors but they are used extensively in thai cuisine chinese cuisine and you'd be surprised they are used quite frequently in italian and spanish cuisine as well Ah, nice and fragrant now. We don't need to brown this or anything. Just about 15 to 20 seconds is perfect. That's it. Now we'll take a mixer grinder and start with the other ingredients. Going to take some fresh lemongrass stalks and just roughly chop them. A few cloves of garlic, which also we are going to roughly chop. a piece of galangal galangal is uh, thai ginger if you don't have galangal available you can substitute ginger the flavors are fairly similar but galangal will give it that authentic aroma we're going to use some few kaffir lime leaves as well they also have a lovely delicate aroma when you start roasting and cooking this curry your whole home will fill with thai flavors and thai aromas the way to clean the leaves is there is a thick stem over here we just going to remove the stem and the leaf will break into two pieces like this i'm just going to take all of this in a mixer i'm going to take a few coriander leaves coriander roots they have a lovely flavor a few green chilies just going to roughly break them in some sugar and some salt and finally our roasted cumin and coriander seeds we will blend all of this to a nice smooth paste first dry and then with a little bit of water now we shall add a little bit of water Don't be tempted to put too much water at once because the paste will not be as fine if you put too much water at the beginning. Now our paste is perfectly blended. Be a little patient and gentle with this step because the herbs are quite uh, hard and fibrous they take a little bit of time to blend properly and if you hurry up this step then the curry will not be as nice and smooth when you eat it just going to empty out my paste in a bowl now now let's start with the curry we have done the hard work with the curry paste from here on it's easy breezy now we we'll take some oil in a pan some garlic After the garlic goes in the pea aubergine they lend a lovely slightly bitter flavor to the curry some sliced galangal again a few of these beautifully fragrant kaffir lime leaves about 3 or 4 just quickly give it a stir a few of our lovely lemongrass uh, stalks what i'm going to do with the lemongrass is just roughly smash my lemongrass 
so it starts to release all that beautiful flavor and aroma into my curry. Ah, wonderful aroma. And now we shall fry our lovely curry paste. About two to three tablespoons of curry paste are perfect for three to four portions of curry, but you can suit your taste accordingly. If you like it more spicy, you can add more curry paste. If you like it a little less spicy, you can add a little less curry paste. A lot of curries in Thai cuisine are made with very fresh and fragrant herbs. Vis-a-vis -vis Indian curries which are slow cooked with dry spices. These are curries which release their flavor very, very quickly and they cook within 15 to 20 minutes depending on whether it is chicken or fish or vegetables, whatever you're going to put in them. So make sure you don't cook the curry for too long. Otherwise, all the wonderful, delicate flavors will just go away. I'm just going to put a little bit of water to make sure my paste fries properly. Now, a quick tip over here. Please don't stop yourself from making this curry thinking you have to make the paste every time you want to cook the curry. This paste is perfectly well in the fridge for anywhere between seven to 10 days. You can make it once and enjoy your curry two to three times. Now, we're gonna put in some lovely fresh coconut milk. Just look at the wonderful color of this curry. Look at the vibrant, fragrant green color. I promise you, you will not get this flavor and color when you buy any packaged curry paste from the market. Now we shall add in all the vegetables, some pumpkin, some aubergine. I absolutely love aubergine or bengan in a curry because it just soaks up the flavor of the curry beautifully well some beans, some carrots, which I have cut in a wonderful shape, some baby corn. Look at the lovely natural colors of the vegetables in the curry. Give this all a quick stir. I'm going to quickly season it with some sugar and a tiny pinch of salt. Since we are making a vegetarian curry, I have used salt over here. You can also use fish sauce if you like. Let's quickly have a taste. Mm. Fantastic, just a, another tiny pinch of salt. Our curry has now been simmering away for about seven to eight minutes. I'm going to add a little bit of water and I'm going to go with my other vegetables some Chinese cabbage, a few fresh leaves and stems of bok choy, and some snow peas. Snow peas add a delightful crunch to the dish, which I absolutely love. Now that our curry is almost ready, we're going to finish it with a lot of fresh basil leaves. This is a very important step. The basil lend a beautiful aroma and a delicate sweet finish to the dish. So don't sting on the basil here. As soon as you add the basil in the curry, it's done cooking. You want the fresh aroma of the basil. So please stop the flame as soon as you add the basil in the curry. Now it's time to serve our beautiful, colorful, full of goodness curry. I'm just going to garnish my curry with some nice red chilies over here and some fresh spring onions. I wish you could take in the aroma of this lovely homemade fragrant Thai green curry and I promise you it's going to beat any store-bought curry paste hands down. It's a little bit of an effort to make fresh green curry paste, but the rewards are well worth it and they will last you more than two or three times. So I recommend you definitely try it out at least once for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this recipe for Thai green curry. Please like and subscribe to Sanjeev Kapoor Khazana. Until next time, see you.